So we can classify torques as clockwise or anti-clockwise, uh, depending uh, on which direction they're going, right? We can talk about anti-clockwise torques being positive and clockwise torques as negative, just as a convenient convention, right? Now, at first, this might seem a little confusing, but remember that uh, if we're ever talking about angles in mathematics, we can often talk about them as parts of a circle. And if we were to draw a circle around here, and say that going straight across is zero, then when we increase the angle, we can talk about uh, raising up the thing like that. So going anti-clockwise is positive torque. Right? Now the reason that we talk about them as positive and negative is because we're able to add them together. And having them positive and negative makes that a little easier to do if we're talking about the direction. The net torque in an object, you see, is the sum of all the torques acting on it. So if we have one torque turning a spanner in one direction, and another torque trying to turn the spanner back in the other direction, then we can add them together and see that the torques are going to cancel out. On the other hand, if we have two different torques pushing a spanner in the same direction, then the net torque on that spanner will be greater than either of the individual torques. So clockwise and anti-clockwise torques will cancel each other out. And this is why we can treat them as positive and negative because positive and negative numbers, just like clockwise and anti-clockwise torques, will cancel each other out. We can see an example of two torques cancelling each other out in this photograph over here. If the torque on one side of the barbells was greater, then the whole set of barbells would sort of start to rotate and fall down to one side, assuming we held them right in the middle. But because there's equal torque, from both the right side and the left side, the net torque on the weight is, this, uh, is absolutely zero. So it doesn't turn left or right, it just uh, moves in a straight line. And in fact, it would travel straight down if it weren't being held up. So I'll just repeat it again. Torque and force are not the same thing. Torque causes objects to turn or rotate, and force causes objects to move. So force is measured in newtons, but torque is measured in newton meters, because we calculate newton by uh, we calculate torque by multiplying uh, a force in newtons by a distance in meters. So force can only produce a torque when it is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. That means that if we take a spanner and we try to push it forward toward the axis of rotation, it's not going to turn. So this will be an, uh, an important property of torque when we talk about um, motors and generators and how they can turn.